Hello there. I'm Pickle Rick! Let's do it, guys! Right. It's morphin' time! going. Hello everyone. I'm back with more Geek Culture Talk. He is sad boy. You good? You good? You good child? No. I'm not good. <laughs> Why are you not good? Because we just watched the worst Transformers show I've ever seen. <laughs> did we now? Yes we did. I thought it was a week ago. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! I'm doing it for the camera! <laughs> Do you think I care about what the camera wants? Clearly not. <laughs> not really, no. Anyway, how's it going, everybody? You think I care about my fans? <laughs> Whoa, no, that thing's been rolling the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I I told you this. Yes. We're, anyway. We're filming outside because of COVID, so can't do anything. Still, still, So, yeah. it's the best we got. Exactly. And, uh... What would you... So we're, talk we're talking about Transformers War for Cybertron Siege. <laughs> Probably should mention that first. It was awful. <laughs> Alright, so... Your, 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 what were your initial thoughts? Like, or what were your thoughts when, like... Or should, what, how should we start? Should we like, explain our, first, our history of Transformers, maybe? Sure, that's a great idea. How we about have, you, you we, haven't, we haven't done a Transformers episode True, yet th the this show. would technically be our first Transformers mm -hmm. episode. Uh, yeah, even though it's in the, in the intro, I've done nothing with it so far. Very true. <laughs> See, we remember. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so, so who should start here? Then? I think you should. You go ahead. You go uh, ahead. Uh, all right. So mine, kind of like a mix of places I started with. I mean, I remember watching the first movie, which is right here. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I had a bunch of DVDs of like the uh, Unicron trilogy back in the day, like Armada and Energon. I rented that DVD <laughs> from. I rented a DVD of Energon from Blockbuster and like Cybertron. I had a DVD and have a couple episodes of. Mm -hmm. And a few of things like I watched the original movie. Like the the original original one hey, oh, on DVD legendary. before I ever watched G one. So imagine my shock in G one where I'm thinking, man, everyone here dies. <laughs> All of these characters are going to die horribly. Uh, yes, yeah, so like I think I'm bit of animated also. Mm. So a mix of place to have my start with it. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, a big fan. Yeah, likewise, my first introduction was the Michael Bay movie, which you know what, in hindsight, isn't that bad. Yeah. We gave it a lot of we gave a lot of a hard time, but it's pretty all right. Uh, yeah. It then moved on to a, a Transformers. The Devastator of with, with balls. Ah! Uh, <laughs> I'm directly below the enemy scrotum. <laughs> but it then moved on to uh, an addiction with Transformers, as all young boys eventually get. Uh, yes. And I was introduced to uh, the original original movie, which was mind blowing to my small little brain. Right. Like oh my like. It was just so good. It's such a nostalgic thing for me. Yeah. And that's what really introduced me to Transformers, and ever since I've been a massive fan of it. And uh, this is testing my love for the franchise. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's also the sound that's like we're outside, so. Yeah. So, it's, I, mean, also, I have my phone recorder going, so in case something. <laughs> in case something goes wrong. <laughs> Open so. Oh great! That's, that's the disc. The disc are fine. Okay, that's what matters. <laughs> it's, it was resting on my charger here, so. <laughs> it was. It was. I'll just unplug this for now. We're not gonna need to get the laptop. Yeah, we're not gonna need the computer right now. <laughs> yeah, I'll just unplug that. <laughs> All right, technical difficulties aside, now. We're doing it live. <laughs> yeah. So, tr of course, Transformers evolved over the years to many different things, and now this is the most recent iteration, I yes. guess. Which I remember being asked. About a year back, I think, before? Yeah, I think so. I remember it was like one day getting a weird recommendation on YouTube saying, uh, Transformers are from the Netflix. And I'm like, this is real? I couldn't find any articles talking about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I like, remember I was like, on paper, it sounds like a good idea. Yeah. It's like, 
we've had tons of great Transformers shows. Right. So why wouldn't Netflix make a good one? Right. Yeah, and I was kind of like weird because like legit could not find almost any articles talking about it. So it was yeah. kind of weird. Yeah. And I was kind of I was hopeful because Netflix has a pretty. It's pretty so-so track record for the most part. Fairly good track record, I'd say, right? Yeah. yeah. And, like, it was, I think they said it was about to have War for Cybertron, so that seems pretty cool. And, like, yep. I heard it was also the War for Cybertron animators are probably yep. working on it, so I can't exactly fact-check that. Still can't confirm. So, <laughs> I could, but I'm just being lazy. True, <laughs> true. And, of course, this came out, came out, like, two months back by this point. Oh, yeah, yeah. It came right. out a while ago. True, but, like, when this gets uploaded, who knows? Yeah. It could be five years from now. <laughs> We could be dead. <laughs> I'll make sure it's out in time. Okay, okay. Let me look it up where, how long it came out. The exact timeline. Yeah. But of course, so we watched it, of course, for a couple for a couple of weeks. It's only six episodes long. The first, yep. the first season chapter of a three-thing arc. Which, not to interrupt or anything, but if this is what the rest of the seasons are going to be, just six episodes, it's a little worrying. Yeah. It's a little worrying. Like, All right, so this came out on July 30th. Oh, yeah? It's been about two months now. Yeah, I remember it, it did come out this year, so that's... So someone gave, said, uh, the re review on IMDb saying was super hype, but let down in the end. Ooh. And they but gave us six. <laughs> Whoa! You're really forgiving, <laughs> random viewer. <laughs> uh, Someone named P.G. Ann Kark. P.G. Ann Kark. Whatever. Impressive. You know what? P.G. Ann Kark, wherever you are, I hope, uh, hope you're doing good. I hope you see this P.G. Ann Kark. <laughs> Who knows? Like, of course, we watched the show, and your initial thoughts when we started it, compared to when we finished it? My initial... Th as in, like, initial thoughts prior to watching, or, like, in the first episode? Like, when, like from the first episode to the last episode, what did you think? First episode... Huh? Last episode... That's honestly the best way I can describe it. <laughs> I call it a bit of a shit show. <laughs> yeah, 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 right? Well, but... So your first, uh, your first impressions? It was like it's it seemed like very fine for the most part. Mm -hmm. so I'm like it's not explaining stuff, which we'll get into that. But like at, at the end of it, I'm like, what did we accomplish here? <laughs> Why are we still here? Just to suffer? Yeah, yeah like I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it started off it looked fine. Like, there was even a homage to the first episode ever of Transformers with Bones yes. and Wheeljacks, the first people on screen. Exactly, just like the first. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, but then it devolved, it devolved very quickly into this. Very weird new universe. Yes, which I'll give props to the creativity, you yeah, know? Yeah. It has ideas. Now that, on your opinion, it can be good ideas or bad ideas. It has ideas, it, like Michael Bay had ideas. Yeah, true, sure, true. Sure. <laughs> yeah. The first episode really encapsulates what you're in store for for the rest of this, like the season. Yeah. Because you get dropped in the middle of nowhere. You feel like so much has happened, but oh, you're yeah. not aware of it. Like, we're we're in the, we're, I feel like we're in like the end phase of this massive cultural war, but it treats the viewer as if like we've seen everything up to this point. Yeah. So like in the first episode alone, when Optimus Prime showed up to save Bumblebee and Wheeljack mm -hmm. from the Decepticons, there's this whole big thing we're talking about Megatron saying all oh, how you killed Alpha Trion. They treat that as a, a big exactly. reveal, like, oh, Megatron killed Alpha Trion, and exactly. we have them, like, no, we just met these versions of these characters. We never even met We don't Alpha even know Trion. what Alpha Trion looks like in this series. Yes. Alpha doesn't even show up to, like, episode four. Yeah! Like, like Ghost. Which is, like, over halfway into the series. And that's an overarching problem this whole show, where they, like, let me, other Transformers shows have taken place after yes. events, like Transformers Prime, or Animated, Animated, yeah. Animated yeah. they took place after these big wars, yeah. like, it, at least they give context. They're not like massive things like exactly. look like in what's a good example in Prime. They said, "Oh, Bulkhead was once a construction worker." Yep. Like, okay, that's that's good. That's not a massive story thing we need to know, but it's just a simple thing. Yeah, yeah, this is more. like, okay, so remember we did all this and that. Remember when when we were brothers and we were fighting and we were killing people. So remember like, the thirty first nope. war against the Quintessons? I do. Because <laughs> like. Well, it was like episode two, Old Magnus and Megatron were talking, he says, yeah. remember how we were brothers, we used to fight alongside something, and like, no. Yeah, I remember that episode two, episode negative 100. <laughs> like, it's, I don't think they get that, just because we know these characters for other iterations, yeah. I'm not going to know them like that, immediately. I, I think legitimately, when we were watching episode one, I was like, did we skip 
did we like fast forward a couple episodes? Which we did. Yeah, exactly. Like, because it legitimately felt like stuff has happened prior, and I know, like we were saying, this has happened before in other Transformers shows. Yeah, but it was, it was like minimal, not best. Yeah, like, yeah. And even then, they always explain it. Like, yeah, they always give like uh, context. Like, okay, this is a quick summary of what happened, and uh, here we are uh, now. Yeah, like Prime. Like, yeah. like they mentioned it. Like early on, at one point they said Prime was. Not Prime always, or not even Optimus always. Yeah, yeah. A couple of episodes later, they explain the whole origin, which, like, that's how it should be. This is not. Exactly, exactly. Because, like, I don't know, can I example? I think the best way to put this is that with every other Transformers show, it's really easy to understand what happened prior because it's always the same. A massive war between the Decepticons and the Autobots. Yeah. And then they come to Earth, yada, yada. And then throughout the series, it'll explain a few little key things. Yeah. But in this show... It's not that. It's <laughs> we get dropped in right at like right after the peak of the war. Yeah, like if it doesn't feel exactly. complete. So like in Gen One when they come to Earth, all we need to know is that they're at war. We don't need to know like ah yes the the capital city of Cybertron was sieged by the Decepticon military force or whatever. Like, like this show. I'm trying to make an example, but it's like if uh, I don't know. It's like you're throwing someone in the Spider Man for the first time. Like you know, like they don't. You don't need to tell the origin. That's yeah. well known. Yeah. But you can't just throw them in and expect them to say no. Yeah. Oh, here's like D-list supervillain the fly, <laughs> which you don't know, but I do from an encyclopedia. That's genius. It's like, like here he is. You know him, right? No. Nah. <laughs> Spider Man, it's me, your arch enemy, the fly. <laughs> ah, here's our here's Toxin, like before Carnage or Venom. <laughs> you remember them? Yeah. Like, nah, we never met Venom or Carnage. You don't throw him into the Sinister Six, like first issue. Yeah. Like, who the hell are these people? You don't throw a person in Endgame. No. About no. seeing that. You don't throw a person into Deathly Hallows Part 2 about seeing Deathly Hallows Part 1. Exactly. You don't exactly. throw a person into, like, I don't know, Season 15 of Supernatural about seeing 14 seasons prior. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and the other shows can get away with this because they're... It was minimum at yeah, best. Yeah, yeah. It's simple, bada boom. It's really all you gotta know. But in War for Cybertron, you have to know the lore. You have to... Again, it feels like they expect you to know this stuff, which we don't. And this lore sounds interesting, the yeah. idea is, like, some, like not all the main Autobots are Autobots, mm -hmm. which, like, again, I find I have some problems with, like, like Ratchet's not exact, wasn't exactly a yeah. member of them, she was, like, a medic on both sides, yes. sort of. He just healed any, like, wounded yeah. Cybertronians he found. Which I, I found that neat, but then you have other ones like Bumblebee, Bumblebee. who's, like, this outcast who's, like, eh, I don't the want wanderer, this. wanderer, yeah. Which I'm, like... I mean, Bumblebee's gone for iterations before. Yes. Several times you have either the very fun, lovable guy who always hangs out with our the, the, the silly little brother character. character yeah. yeah, like in G1 or yeah. Made, Or you have your silent warrior type who also like, still has to have fun. Exactly. Like in like prime prime movies. movies. Exactly, exactly. This is like, I don't know what they were trying to do. I think... Because it particularly does not work when it's the G1 Bumblebee. Yes, I, I can't not take at all. that seriously exactly. with this version. Because like we already have a... We already link that design with the wholesome, like, sweet Bumblebee from G1. Yeah, like... And I think that's actually my main issue with this version, yeah. is that I'm, I'm kind yeah, of... That's your main issue, Bob, among all the other issues we have. <laughs> it's my main issue with Bumblebee. <laughs> Let's put it like that. My main issue with him is that it's not that he's not aligned, because honestly, that's an idea I can get behind. One who's on neither side, but can show us, like... The goods and cons of both sides. Which they didn't really do. Which they didn't do whatsoever. <laughs> but <laughs> I digress. My issue is that Bumblebee's an asshole. Like he's just a jerk. But they use like a, like a, a an Earth term to call someone an asshole. Or yeah, they literally yeah, they, they, they use asshole to term. Wheeljack right? calls him a pain in the ass. Which that doesn't make any sense. Exactly. What like it, what is this in Cybertronian being trans transferred into English? What's the equivalent <laughs> of ass in Cybertronian? <laughs> I don't know. Like the. The port. <laughs> hey, it's a real pain in my tailpipe, That's which is exactly what you'd expect them to say. They got. I think they, they do a lot of characters. They have. They really alter a lot of them. Yes. Like some of these people are going, but I don't know where they're going with half these ideas. Like okay, Ultra Magnus and Megatron were brothers. Brother? I think. I think. I think it was brothers in arms. Bro yeah, brothers in arms. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Another problem with this show is that like. They make it super confusing about who really started this war. Mm -hmm. So one way they make it sound like the, the Decepticons just did it. But then they say that the Decepticons were the lower class people. Yeah, they say like the Autobots were the 1% and the Decepticons were like the poor miners or whatever. Yeah. 
but it, it's never really been properly in front. I don't know. I don't know who started this war, honestly. Exactly. Like, honestly, near like the middle section, I was kind of rooting for the Decepticons when I found out the Autobots were like the the one percent, like the high class. Yeah, like it's exactly. It's like, like at this. Here's the thing: the Decepticons never really do. In other shows, because they're invading Earth, now you have an issue. Because they're all located on their own planet, this feels like, hey, it's just a revolution. Uh, yeah, like, just rising up against a corrupt government, in their opinion. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I don't know. They're not out to conquer the world, like, in Prime. Yeah. Yeah. They're just like, hey, we want a new new way of doing things. But, but among that, besides, there's more problems with this show, there of course. There is plenty. Like, for one major thing is the voice acting. <laughs> which, which, not... I don't want to talk shit to these people. <laughs> like, I've seen, I, I've seen other people talk about... I've seen other people say how, like... I love this take. There, because there's... <laughs> the whole video I saw about how Peter Cullen talked about how he was not happy with, or how they treat him during Bumblebee. Yeah, he was kind of snuffed. And like how... The guy, this guy in the video, was, if I can find it, I'll link in the description again. Mm -hmm. Like, the guy was saying how, like, you know, we I'm not saying we always need to have Peter Cullen or Frank Walker. Like, it, we should always give other people a chance. Exactly, which I'm like, exactly. I agree. Like, because, like, Kevin Conroy, mm. the best Batman for me. But, like, yeah. one, one of my other favorite Batmans is Bruce Greenwood, who voiced him under the Red Hood. Yeah, so, yeah. Like, like, of course, it wouldn't happen if we gave it to Kevin Conroy always. Yeah, you can't lock one character to this actor. Otherwise, yeah. you kill the character when the actor dies. Yeah, like, that, that's how it goes with Doctor Who and James Bond. Yeah, the exactly. Generations. You get attached to him, then he dies, moves on to a new yeah. actor. Yeah. Which, of course, like, I understand that doing this show. However, the voice acting, like, I, maybe these guys have done good work in the past. I don't know, because I, I don't, don't know any of the people we in the past. We don't know. None of these are names. Like, no one... No, there's no, like, regular people, like, that I would know, like, no, like, Jennifer Hales or Nolan North, like, exactly. typical voice actors I would recognize. Recognize and know, like, these are quality guys. Yeah. They're, they're nobodies, which, okay, fine enough, but they all sound the same. They like, do. Like, the, the only they one you really can really tell are either female voices the part, but even then, they all sound the similar. Yes, too. all the female voices sound like, the exact same. Soundwave, Shockwave, Starstream, Maximum, that's all I can identify. Eat. Even then, all the Decepticons sound the same, except for Megatron. Shockwave, who's, who's usually sounds like this, I am logical, sounds like, yes, Lord Megatron. Starscream, yes, Lord Megatron. Soundwave, yes, Lord Megatron. They all sound the exact same to me. Like, they, I know, like, it's... And they're not, they're all different voice apps, but yeah. not, no one sounds... Like, Unique. Yeah, like, what, you, you point out one thing that... They sound out of breath a lot of times. They do. They all sound like they just went on a workout and then recorded their lines. Like, <gasps> yeah, like I, I don't get it. It's just it's this very war, weird. This war has been going on for five thousand years. <laughs> and like I said, is it in our when we're watching that the voice acting sounds like like YouTubers. Yeah, it sounds like a YouTuber in his base. Because like Optimus Prime at one point screams like, oh, like it sounds like like almost a bash of me, but like I'm not really because like this is how. Me, other people on YouTube who do sketch videos do. We sound yeah. exactly like that, but have no acting experience. Sound like that screaming, exactly. trying to be serious. Like, oh, how dare you! And yet, I've seen stop motion, stop motion, and like animated, like on YouTube from like just people in their basements, which are better quality than this. Yeah, like. It's just. Uh, uh, speaking of that quality, what's your thoughts on the animation? <sighs> to me, that's, that's when the one like. Like redeeming, not great, but like redeeming things at least for the show. You know show. what? I I didn't think about it, which kind of means it's not offensive enough to think about it. Yeah. But it's also not like it's not like Transformers animated where everything's so lively and like you just love looking at it. Not right. Transformers War for Cybertron Siege is just like it is there and it is doing its job. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, compared to cause like another thing, they also use like characters like toys. They. As their base model design. Yep, this is an actual fact. They made the toys first, and then made the cartoons. So all the t all the characters in the show are based off their toys. Which is noticeable when you can see all the you can see the you can see the ball yep. sockets on their the, arms. You can see the ball the, joints, the, the, the joints, the things you would attach accessory mm -hmm. toys on their arms, which is and all the access stuff. Yeah, all on this, their backs. If you look at like. I think Moonracer is like the biggest offender. Her entire car form is on her back at all times. Or when the Seekers are in their jet modes, yep. you can see their back is on their back. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm not exactly. sure if this, just like, like, like in the yeah, toys. well, yeah, this toy. If you get a good shot of, of this, and yep. you can see like there's this 
the whole back piece. All of that's the called truck. that's called kibble. All that it's, stuff is called yeah. kibble, and it's in the actual show. Which for a toy you can't do much when you're doing a transform, but exactly. in a cartoon, in a cartoon specific, you can manipulate it. You specifically make it to look as good as possible that it, the toys have to accommodate. And which other shows have done have used the toy models before in the past, like like Energon and Cybertron. Yeah. Those are those are worse than those scenarios because in Cybertron in particular, they're very stiff and yeah. like really had no emotion in their faces whatsoever. They don't really have sure. much emotion here either, but there was some expression. Like in Cybertron, if you ever watch clips of it, they're so like just it's so like just stiff like yeah, this. Yeah, really movie. like oh they're actually playing with a toy right now. Yeah, it, yeah. it doesn't age well. Yeah, well, this this like at least they move better, but still because another problem I have is that they were really going for like the war aspect of yes. this trying to show. All War the characters are, like, scratched up and dented. Yeah, yeah like, there's there's several scenes, but there's one part where, like, Mirage, like, sneaks in with the Decepticons. They yep. look over this field of dead bodies of people just cut in half, impaled on p pikes and, mm -hmm. like, whatnot, which is probably a grim scene, but it... But I can't take can't, it seriously. Yeah, because they're toys. They're, they literally look like toys. They literally look like you pulled the head off of a Mirage toy and stuck it on a toothpick. Or even another one, like, when they're looking over Ratchet's whole... Or Red Alert's yeah. whole... The siege of people he has to fix up. I can't think it's seriously because it just looks like a, a kid broke his toy in half. Exactly. Like, uh, and spoilers because we are spoiling this show. When Obviously. Moon Racer died, <laughs> it's, they it's literally silly. just ripped her arms off, and it looks like you unplugged them. Like, it like like legit. it looked like they just like you had to pop them back it's, in. It's, it looks like that's <laughs> the extent of the damage. I can fix this myself now. I don't know. Like, what was the plan objective here exactly with these toy idea? <laughs> Because I don't think they knew what they were doing. I, I, this, I really think what they're trying to do is cash in on G1 nostalgia but with a more, like, uh, grittier take. Because, like, all, all the characters have, like, scratch marks and, like, paint scuffs, and they all yeah. look like they were in a fight. But they still look like they're G1 models. And they still transform the G1 cars, like, like Despite Earth vehicles. Despite being on Cybertron. Like, some don't, but, like... Most of them do. The only ones that don't, I think, is the Seekers. And Megatron. And did Megatron even transform yeah, the show? tank. Like, in one episode. Oh, well... Megatron... It's hard to remember, because almost no one transformed <laughs> exactly. that show. Which is ridiculous. Ultra Magnus is killed off and doesn't transform once. Mm. Which also, going on to Ultra Magnus, I believe in the second episode... It's the end of the first episode. Yeah, end of the first episode, Ultra Magnus betrays uh, Megatron. Not Megatron, portrays Optimus, <laughs> and he's going to like the Mega, like the Decepticon base, like covered in a cloak, and it's supposed to be like, the show plays it off as if like the viewer is wondering who is it, who, like a big reveal. Yeah, who is this like hooded figure? Who, which ought, who is this? Well, you can literally see his massive shoulders. And on Netflix, because like when it says starts auto playing the next episode, it shows yep. the image of that. <laughs> Like, it's not even in shadow, you just no, see it. Like, exactly. Like, even if it was in shadow, Ultra Magnus' massive shoulders ruin it. Like, if you wanted to do that, mm -mm. you wouldn't... Because, like, because everyone knows the G1 design, if, if it was, like... I don't know, if it was, like, Robots in the Skies, like the original Robots in the Skies Ultra yes. Magnus, like, that would work so you don't know that's Ultra Magnus, but still, this doesn't work. Exactly, exactly. It's like... It's just, like, if they really wanted to go for this, cover the shoulders. Uh, yeah, like, it's like that. But even then, you can see the the color scheme and stuff. True, like, true. It doesn't work when we literally just saw a scene with him, and I was like, "Who is it?" I'm like, "Ultra Magnus." Of course, it's Ultra Magnus. Why are you taking so long? If they wanted to make us trick, you would just like take off all the accessories to make him white, white Optimus. Prime. White Optimus Prime and reference that toy. Exactly. And, and he carries his wagon around, all spare pieces. <laughs> it's, it's me, man. He lost Prime. the box. Aww. <laughs> Uh, what else? We, have, we haven't really gone to the plot of what this was exactly. No, we haven't. Do you want to give a synopsis or? Uh... The basic what thing was is... the plot? <laughs> what happened? The, by the end of the show, I was like, how is this the ending? Nothing has happened to warrant so, an ending. <laughs> the plot was, of course, they were trying to escape Cybertron. They were trying to find the AllSpark and prepare the space bridge to leave. Like it was. <laughs> when did that become the plot? <laughs> that was the basic plot. Was it? For the most part. I was right here next to you! <laughs> oh my Look, god. Look, that's why I was just assuming that was the plot, right? <laughs> maybe maybe it was about Krispy Kreme donuts, for all I freaking know. Maybe Office Prime's actually a delivery <laughs> truck. Alright? Oh, dude. That'd be amazing. But that was the, the basic plot. And the problem, because it's six episodes, like yeah. we said. And, like, Netflix can do shows in a short amount of time. Yes. Like, look yes. at, like, Stranger Things. They do that... 
Like, they've been, like, maximum eight to nine episodes. Yeah. That works. Or look at other Story streaming enough. shows like The Mandalorians, eight episodes, or yeah. The Boys, eight, eight episodes. episodes. Other epi- other shows, I can't think of the top of my head right now, but, like... Yeah, exactly. They're eight episodes. Eight and, like, episodes is enough to get across an entire season's arc. In my yeah, opinion. which, like, that works. Like, it's, like, you could do a long if you want, but it, it can be effective. It can be more, like, streamlined exactly. and, like, focus more on story than exactly, episodes. Exactly, exactly. But, like, it... It felt like it. It felt like it was sorting out at least a good place. Like, okay, we need to find the Allspark and get off here. Somewhere in the middle, it at the space bridge part was added in this whole thing, uh-huh. and then we're leaving by two episodes later. I'm like, it felt like we rushed this whole. Story oh, and line. then and then Omega Supreme shows up <laughs> out of nowhere, and like, which you said earlier, say, what if he's in the, in the <laughs> show? And then we saw the preview of the next episode <laughs> showing Omega his silhouette. Su- it was like three Omega Supreme silhouettes. That's another, that's another problem I have about the show. Also, it spoils it. In the no, media. not that. Just like characters, like they'll throw characters in. Yes, it's like it's, half the time. Like. I, I think you mentioned in the first episode when they were showing us um, Alita One, Optimus Prime, Red Alert, and a few other Autobots. Yeah. Do you think is this our cast? Is is it going to be like a small one, like Prime, similar? Yeah, yeah but like a very weird choice of yeah, cast. Yeah, a little weird. Like but Red Alert. Yeah. And like our Alita One. How? Sideswipe. Exactly. Cog. <laughs> We will make, we will have an entire rant. Oh no, he's got the rant about Kong. <laughs> I have a rant about Kong, bro. But. At first, I thought the same thing. I was like, okay, this is going to be our smaller cast of Autobots, just like a lot of other shows, like yeah. Animated and Prime, where we can get to know them better, and we don't have to, you know, worry about all this fluff. Next episode, they throw in a bunch more Autobots. Next episode, they throw in a bunch more Autobots. It was mostly like by episode four, I think, they were starting to throw in the ones people know, like yeah. Ratchet and Iron Ratchet, Iron Knight showed up. In, in the, in Out the, of the line. nowhere. Cliff Jumper shows up for 20, not even a full minute. And he still dies. <laughs> presumably. Well, presumably, yeah. But still, I just... And like, RC. RC's the not, greatest offender. RC's yeah. like the biggest thing. Nowhere, like, okay, we had Alita 1, Moonracer, and Chromia, I think. Yeah, like, Chromia. These are our female cares. RC shows up in episode 5 out of nowhere. No introduction, she's just now here. And yes. Like, and it's like, that's when I, like, my pandering... Like radar goes off, like okay, this is absolutely just so like the old fans are like, yeah, oh my god, it's my favorite character. I know that person. Yeah, Cog. Oh yeah, Cog, bro. But, like it doesn't, it doesn't. In Omega Supreme, like in Shadow, no, 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 not our, not RC. The worst fan is Astro Train. Oh, yeah, Astro Train comes back for three seconds. Says in nothing there, for no reason. Like he just came out of nowhere. I'm like, did you just realize we can't keep using our per- our percept well, reflectors, our reflectors and our seekers? We can't just keep doing that. Eh. Which again, I think that bridges us to another problem with the show. Yeah. So, uh, of course, G1 like they're it's all based off G1 and G2 yes. toys. Cause yeah. Cog's a G2 toy. I believe so. Yeah. And like there's some there's like like barricades down here, but it's a yeah. G1 design. Which I'm actually I I respect. Yeah. But it's literally just a uh, prowl or prowl repaint. Which we we already had smoke screen and blue streak. We prowl. had three prowl repaints. But so that's what they did. And of course, in G1, like they had, I think they were trying to take into account G1's problem because in G1 they always made this the thing. That annoyed me as a kid, like, oh, the Decepticons, they outnumber us. I'm like, no, they don't. You guys outnumber them by a lot. Their lineup consists of, okay, Megatron, three Seekers, mm. Soundwave, and then the guy who turns into a goddamn camera. Yeah, exactly. That's their lineup of people. <laughs> exactly. What do you got? You got Optimus, Bumblebee, Ironhide, Ratchet, Wheeljack, Brawn, Gears, Hounds, Mirage, yeah, like, but... army of people. Exactly. Later additional Skyfire than the Dinobots. Yes. Like... It's like, you guys are stacked, bro. You guys are stacked. You could even, destroy these guys. Even in season two, like, when they, when they added the additional Seekers yeah. and Blitzwing, they didn't add, oh, we added Blaster and Power Glide and all these people. Yep. Omega yeah. Supreme was in season two. Yeah. Like, they literally, like, Decepticons get the Constructicons, bada boom, Omega Supreme stomps on them. <laughs> yeah, like, the Dinobots took out con- the, them at the end of season exactly, one. Exactly, yeah. Beyond the point, basically, we're tr- they're Repaints. always outnumbered, basically. Yeah. That was the problem, because they were based off toys. So here yes. they, because they were very heavily on the G1 aesthetic. But because of that, there's so much repainting of characters. It's 
annoying. Mm -hmm. And then they had the audacity at one point because Sound Blast comes in, <laughs> the, which they made a joke saying, wow, he looks a lot like Soundwave. I'm like, you cannot say that when there's like, you have five people with like Cog, five people that look like Sideswipe. <laughs> it's like, repaints have always been a thing. Repaints are like a classic thing of Transformers. Like Cliff Jumpers are repaints. Yes, Cliff, Jump <laughs> Cliff Jumpers are literally just Bubblebee. Thundercracker and Skywarp are Starstream, but a different color palette. Like Ultramanus is a repaint yeah. Optimus, but just with accessories. Yeah, exactly, just with a suit of armor. Like, it's part of the show. And the fans have come to like love it in that sense. Like, eh, hey, we oh, see. They've come to love it. I haven't. I hey, I I, I love Thundercracker and I love Cliff Jumper. Look, the, a few is fine. Yes, but yes. at this point, they got way too overboard. And this is just, they basically try to build armies based off of one character and a thousand different colors. The Autobots have. One million different cogs a, in a different colors. A few side swipes. A few side, like a couple, a couple uh, hounds, I think, as well. Yeah, I, I don't recall that. I think I remember. I but think then, it might have been in the ratchet scene. There's maybe a couple of different hounds. But then there was, who's the other guy who like betrayed the Decepticons? Excuse me. Oh, uh, Skyfire. No, not him. The other guy. Oh, Impactor. Yeah, imp <laughs> there's like twenty Impactors, and then the the Decepticons have an army of reflectors. I'm like. Why, at your entire army, you send to attack the Autobots Reflector? You send Reflector. And they were winning. <laughs> the they thing. were winning. I'm like, you cannot tell me an army of Reflector. We're talking about the Decepticon in terms of a goddamn, like, camera. Like, Polaroid camera. Is, like, no. Exactly. Like, like my issue was, okay, different colored Seekers. Different we're, colored we're, we're in good time as Randall. We so are, we're, yeah. We're only, we're only 30 minutes in. We're usually an hour at this point. <laughs> Yeah. Like with Endgame. We're, we're, getting, we're getting through a lot. I'm proud of us. Yeah. Proud of us. You should be proud of us, too. You leave a like. Leave well, a comment. Well, we have stuff to rant about more. Oh, we do. It's it not goes by much yet. faster. Exactly. But, oh, like, boy. different colored Starscreams have been a thing forever. Which, that's fine. Yeah, that's that's fine, in my opinion. They were even in the Bumblebee movie. Yeah. Like, that's how they showed a bunch of Decepticons. Like, Blitzwing in that movie yeah. was Bumble... Not Bumblebee, Starscream. Was just a Starscream... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But in this, it's just... It's painful. It's borderline awful, dude. <laughs> like, it's... I don't... It's like, we have Starscream, who is... awful. <laughs> he's literally, like... He's what you expect, but instead of trying to betray Megatron, he tries to be, uh, like, betray Jetfire. It's like... It's like, what? Are you trying to climb I, the ladder, dude? What the hell? Again, <laughs> another problem. They had... storylines for characters, but... Jetfire is the worst thing, which I'm still gonna call him Skyfire. I've yeah. always known him as Skyfire, yeah. not Jetfire. I've always called him Jetfire personally. So. Yeah, so if you guys get confused, that's our explanation. It, yeah, it's a whole thing. It couldn't be called Jetfire or whatever. Legal reasons, yeah. But so early on, he shows up with Starscream and the Seeker, which I was kind of surprised about. But like, okay, no, he was a Septicon. Well, not Septicon. Originally. Well, he was, he was friends with Starscream yeah. in the Gen One. Yeah, which is the thing, and then like. Starstream wants to, like, point blank execute Bumblebee and Wheeljack, and then Star Sky Jetfire <laughs> slices his arm off like a, with a lightsaber. With a literal, true. like, blade-wristed lightsaber. And, and tells him, like, nah. Which, like, show, but, like, and, he, and then Starstream tries to, like, complain to Megatron, like, ah, he's the worst. He, but she's a traitor, Megatron, look at my arm! And then, like, I don't even know how he got to this point. Like, him and Skywarp, what were they doing again? Him and Skywarp were looking for traces of the Autobots, I think. Right, and I, then he reveals to Jetfire that they're going to wipe out all the Autobots, which... Um, which, which we'll get onto it, because I have problems with. And Jetfire's kind of like, no, we no. can't do that. I will not I will not exterminate an entire species, despite the fact that he's probably committed thousands of war crimes at this point. <laughs> okay, slicing Starstream's arm off, no yeah, problem. You're not an issue, dude. And then, like, he... He shoots Skywarp in the back, like into a fight, and he flies. Shoots not, him. Not just the back, dude. The tiny like end of his wing, like this this little section of his wing, and apparently it kills him thirty minutes later. <laughs> yeah, not even that. We just no, because we saw him at the end of the episode, like completely injured, like he just started, well, he was shot twenty times. Yeah. And the next episode was like he's dead. I'm like, <laughs> while well, also there was a Skywarp in the background. The scene they were yep. saying he was dead. Yep. It's just like here's the thing. If you want to use the different, like, Starscream repaints, just stick to the ones that people know. Yeah, like... like just stick to Jet... 
Just stick to Sky Warp and uh, Thundercrack. Uh, you were talking about ones called Acid Storm and Nova Bomb or something? They're, they're the Rainmakers who appeared in one episode of Season 2, which are like a, a neon green. Oh no, green. Season, season 1, actually. Se season 1, yeah, yeah, yeah. A neon green Starscream, a neon blue Starscream, and a neon yellow Starscream. Yeah, yeah which like, I never heard about any of these characters. Which, reasonably so, they're not characters. <laughs> yeah, which, I mean, I mean, I... I don't know. They're called the Rainmakers, if you're interested. It's really dumb, and like, there's also tornadoes on Cybertron, which annoys me, because I'm like, how... Rain? Okay, fine. How does a tornado happen? It's like, if we're... Because I'm, I'm... I'm almost positive that Cybertron is Primus. Just yeah. transform into a ball. How the hell do you have weather on your giant metallic ball? Well, that's him breathing, like, he's sneezing. He's a robot! He doesn't need to breathe! I don't know, man. Like, I don't care at this point. And, like... Back on the Jetfire thing, he then betrays Septicons, and now he's aligned with the Autobots. Yep. Like, nowhere in the arc was there, like, a, a good, like, transition point to any parts of this storyline. But do you want to know what's worse about that, though? What? His redemption arc is technically more fulfilling than Bumblebee's. I just want you to realize that for a second. Yeah. Do you want to go on about that, or should I? Not, not really. I didn't think much about either of the redemption arcs, honestly. But it's like, so. And that was the thing with Bulma again, the Ultra Magnus code thing. Apparently, it was like after Ultra Magnus died, the uh, what was the name of the guy that uh, Alpha Trion? Uh, yeah, apparently Alpha Trion had like code or something like that. And now when Ultra Magnus died, his code was like transferred to another random. They didn't explain it, but apparently it was like. The coding. It, it's just its just magic, dude. It's just magic. Yeah, I, I don't know. And it's... it goes into Bumblebee, and Bumblebee's all like, I have Autobot information, oh my god! Which, like, then also becomes almost invalid, because almost the next episode... He loses it. An EMP or something went off, and, like, he lost it, apparently. Yep. yep. Like, I don't know. He's like, you're telling me that's how this jerk joins the Autobots, really? Because uh, somebody else died and gave him the mantle of responsibility. No, I think it was he went and saved Prowl, who almost got sucked into the Vortex thing. No, no, that wasn't Bumblebee. Oh, if I was talking about Jetfire, sorry. Sorry, sorry, I was talking about Bumblebee. My bad, my bad. Anyway, about Jetfire, go on. Uh, I don't know, I, never mind. It's just, it's, just, it's really stupid. Well, don't think. you also want to play about Cog, didn't you say? <laughs> yeah! So, ladies and gentlemen, when the Decepticons have the Reflectors and the Star Streamers, Autobots, we got Cog, baby! A worthless... <laughs> Garbage, not human being, Cybertronian, who has 20 different repaints, apparently latches onto your back and acts as like a shoulder mounted cannon, gets killed in the first episode, like, comes like whole, back. His whole like, sh like side is like hip is shot out. Like legit, like if this was human, guts would be flying everywhere. <laughs> Reappears in episode three, I think. It's a lie, but Chromia is like, or Moonracer is like yeah, torn apart and it can't. One of them. Like, oh, we can't save it, That's not a problem. There was like two people with exactly like them. Yes. Both Chromia and Moonracer. We couldn't, we kept getting confused. And like, they were cutting between Optimus and his squad getting the Allspark and then Ratchet and his squad fixing the space bridge mm. with that same model on both of them. And like, it confused me because I'm like, no, like, why are they both here? Well, I, thought, I thought she died. How was she over there? I, I'm willing to bet, though, that the animators even got confused, and at least there is one clip where they accidentally put the wrong one in that scene. I'm not surprised. I'm willing to bet. I'm willing to bet anything. Like, there's a bunch of other bad arcs, like like Mirage's whole thing with Impactor, like he hated him, but then he liked him. How is that even an arc? And then he and then he died, and Ratchet sad about it. Yeah, a, Impactor was a previous Decepticon, despite in the comics he was an Autobot. Which he... Did join the Autobots, I guess. Yeah, sort I, of. I guess so. And like, there's like, oh, I refuse to trust a Decepticon. And then in the next like five minutes, like, hey, you watch your mouth near this Decepticon. He's okay. And then in the next five minutes, like, I hate Decepticons. Like, uh, just to, just to wrap this up, I guess we're about to be, be four minutes into the yeah. recording. Uh, the show ends. Optimus and a group of the characters get on the Ark and are yep. led to Cybertron. Chromia. Not Chromia. Lita uh, One, Lita One, Red Alert, and Jetfire remain on Cybertron for no real reason. Actually, no. They're we're recording this after the trailer for Earthrise came out. They're not even going to Earth. Apparently not. 
No, we're, we're getting involved with the Quintessons, apparently? And there's these other repaints of the them. mercenaries. Because <laughs> that was stupid. It's like, why is it called Earthrise? We're not going to Earth. <laughs> it's just like... <sighs> Unless it's full slate, uh, I don't know. Yeah, they flee Cybertron, the spaceships get space bridges yep. destroyed, they believe they all died. And now they're fending off Cybertron from the Septicons. Uh, I guess, I guess. They Which, also well, they also threw the Allspark through the space bridge. We don't know where it is. Yeah. It I, could be anywhere. And, of course, also the third chapter of the whole thing will be with the Beast Wars yep. characters, which I saw I saw a toy of Optimus Prime, which I think it's his toy. It looks yeah. like shit. <laughs> I'll, I'll pull it up quickly uh, no. while you elaborate on more stuff if you want. But, yeah, yeah, the, the final, it's going to go from Siege to Earthrise, which I guess is going to be about the mercenaries, which is, like, the sub- Faction of people. Which for a show called War for Cybertron, it's, it didn't seem like we're staying on Earth for the, on Cybertron that long. They, they also, there's really not that many battles. There's very little war going on. Just like, like barely, any, barely any transforming. <laughs> you have no transforming either. But then it's going to end with Kingdom, which I've seen uh, apparently a, like a leaked uh, poster. Yeah. It's going to have Ultra Magnus is apparently still alive. It's going to have. Uh, the Beast Wars characters, it's going to have Galvatron and Cyclonus. Apparently the Ark is going to transform into an Autobot. Yeah. I, I don't know at this point. It's, it's just, this show has ideas, but it's not... They good ideas. It's not likable. Oh, oh yeah, this is the toy. I'll, I'll show oh, pictures yeah? in the video. Oh, God! Doesn't that look bad? Oh, God! Doesn't that look bad? Oh, that's really bad. Is that, they're, they're an actual like toy of. That's the toy. masterpiece. Wait, no, that isn't actually. Well, whatever. That's just. Yeah, that's so that, much better. Yeah, and then you have then you have that. That's awful. Like just the worst looking toy. And as someone who like I also I forgot to mention I also grew up watching Beast Wars on VHS tapes yes. I had from my brother. I love that, but like just from looking at the, this toy image, I'm not excited about this. <laughs> like. It's like how do I put this? From this show, it's it's really stomped on any and all excitement I've had for the rest of this series. Like, even if they bring in some of my favorite characters, I'm not going to be happy. It's like, oh, okay, let's see how you ruin these ones. <laughs> yeah, like, like, if they bring in Blaster, I'll be like, uh... Yeah, whatever. like, if they bring in the Constructicons, it's like, oh, great, can't wait to see more, like, faceless Decepticons. As... I'm trying to figure out what's the Maxwell's that even gonna play a role. Is it even time travel, how... maybe? Maybe? Like, Galvatron and Cyclotus are in this, apparently. If you look at it, they're just throwing stuff at the screen, like, for... This is probably the most toy thing, probably. Yeah, this is a toy commercial. I mean, like, a... which always has been, but, like, this one really feels yes. like it. But at least other shows like Prime and Transformers Animated tried to tell a story alongside it, you know yeah, what well, I mean? Well, Transformers Animated definitely was a toy thing. So well, true. Prime but... was more so, like, didn't care, because they barely featured Prime characters. had very little toys. Yeah. Very little toys when you think about it. And they got cancelled because like, Hasbro said no. Yep. And then we had to have robots in disguise because we need something more childish. Yeah, so... You know, it's unfortunate that Transformers is like... This like, is... Good tears ended in 2013 when Prime came to an end. Yep, yep, and now we have this. I mean, bu I mean Bumblebee was good, but like... Bumblebee it's still, it's still coming off the Michael Bay films. Yeah, yeah, and like... And the got... last good run of Transformers was the time between Prime's era. Yes, yes. And then... I mean, we're in the dark ages. I mean, I've heard Cyberverse is fine. Cyberverse is good, like, if for kids, I guess. Uh, yeah. It's a good kid show. The so Maxwells are in that also, too, apparently. Yeah, all, like, apparently all the everything's in that. Hot Shot's probably in it. Yeah. The <laughs> other Bumblebee. Yeah, the other Bumblebee. Uh, I don't know, so... In, in conclusion... I, I think we ran about everything possible now. It's been 40 minutes so far. I think the only thing... Why well, don't throw this back in my pocket? The mic is still on. <laughs> True. The only thing that we didn't mention, I think, was the whole, like, we're going to reprogram every single Autobot into a Decepticon. Oh, yeah, that's... Using the all spy. Yeah, that was stupid. I don't know. Like, what? You guys are born with different code? Like, what? Also, I read a thing about how the Prime Curse said they were, didn't want to give the characters on that show lips, because they thought it looked weird. And then Megatron has, like, these big lips. Mm, they want to kiss Megatron. Mm. It concludes... Well, that, that plot line was stupid, because just the plot line of them reprogramming, because yes. it just makes sense, whatever. Yes. Final verdict, we gave it... I gave it a 2. I gave it a 2 out of 10 as well. It's... 
Animation is fine. The music once in a while is okay, I guess. I don't remember a single song for that thing. <laughs> Not your lie, but I'm just, like, I'm just saying, I'll just say something. Inoff like, inoffensive. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, it truly is like, I know, I know everyone says Energon is the worst. I remember watching as a kid from Blockbuster. I remember liking it. Yeah. So like, I feel like I'm going to try to watch it now. I probably, probably dislike it. Yeah, I'm like, this is the worst thing I've seen from Transformers. Like, at least even Michael Bay's films, I mean, like, even so they have credits. something redeemable at the end. Yeah, of I mean, they, even though those ones are like the most repetitive, like, okay, ancient artifact, yes. something, yes. Earth, terraform, or whatever. But at least we get sick action scenes. Mm. Yeah. In this, we didn't even get At that. least we got Anthony Hopkins saying some of the lines you never thought. An, an actor of his caliber <laughs> saying in the movie. Like, <laughs> oh my god. Like, he says lines really like, what up? Yeah. You want to know, don't you, dude? Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. Anyway, that's that, that's it. That's War for Cybertron. Yeah. Siege. Uh, we'll probably cover a prize, I guess, if yeah, we want to. Sure. If we're mad enough to watch it. If we have enough spirit. Uh, yeah. We d we may have the touch, but do we have the power? I don't know. We'll find out in the next episode. I guess. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, is that all for today? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us. Yeah, we recorded for basically about. Oops, where's my mic? Ooh, Forty-five minutes. Hey, that's a pretty that's pretty good for us. Yeah. Actually. Yeah, we usually that, go over an hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, thank you for watching and uh, transform roll out, I guess, or whatever. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't the spirit at this point for saying. One hundred Bob Cameron. Studios subscribers transform and roll out. <laughs> Alright, so now, now can we watch a good Transformers thing? Yes! <laughs> yeah, Transformers last night. <laughs> Don't do me like this man. Last night would kill the franchise. <laughs> not really. Bumblebee came out the next year. Well, yes. And that's, that's, what, that's what makes me sad about Bumblebee. It's that uh, because a lot of people were expecting it to be like shitty. Plus, plus it came out It came out bad. Like Aquaman and Spider-Verse yeah, came out. Yeah, true. They had a lot to go up against. Let's go do that post coffee commentary with Moby. Yeah, that was shit. That'd be. You need to upload some freaking videos, dude. Why are you filming vlogs? To keep the content consistent. You have so much on the back burner. I have 27 videos on the back burner, probably. You upload some, bro.